the sink unit in our bathroom. Did I tell you what happened? No. No, I didn't. Uh, I didn't. No. It's lying in bits, the sink unit. It's, we've got a wee tiny toilet unit that's got just about got enough room for a toilet and a sink and a cupboard right. unit in it. But it's, everything's lying in bits because last week, luckily, I was about to put my headphones on and go on the computer as well. And luckily, I hadn't put my headphones on because I'm noise cancelling. But I was in the bedroom and I heard this kind of roaring kind of sound. I was like, I don't know, what, I never heard that before. I'm not familiar with that. And I went into the hallway and it got louder. And I went into the bathroom and it got louder again, but I couldn't see anything. And then I opened the cupboard door and like a flexi, like a metal flexi pipe thing had just erupted and water was just kind of... Like the full pressure of the tap was just pissing out of the, the pipe. So we then had like 15, 20 minutes of just running about going, where's the fucking screwdrivers and... How do we? I tried to wrap it with tape, first of all, and which you can't do once a pipe. Just doesn't work. Then I've been there before as well. By the way, trying to wrap water leak with tape, and you're just like, "What am I thinking?" Right. We phoned the plumber. The plumber eventually did come out, but by by the time he came out, I had managed to stop it. Or managed to stop one of the valves. But aye, it was mad. So everything's lying in bits. How, so how soon did the plumber come? 20 minutes or something but we phoned them back and said after like 15 we were like we'd think it's kind of taken care of and he said because it was through the factor so he was like initially once <laughs> when my girlfriend was talking to him on the phone I, I heard her she's usually very p polite with everybody but the guy says it's 120 pound just the call out fee is 120 pound is that all right he said and she was like Water's pushing everywhere, and I'm throwing towels down. She's like, I suppose it'll have to be, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, but in the end, it, it, when we phoned them back, he was like five minutes. I mean, he says he would only charge us like 60 quid to come out, but then he came out and they couldn't fix it anyway. And we were talking about all the things that we need to get done, and he's going to do it for us, so he never charged us anything right. for the call. Because he's but, getting because he's getting work out about it anyway, so he was all right. Oh my god! These I've always had that. I've always had that fear about pipes, but I've never had, I've never had one blow like that before. I've had like wobbly radiators and cracked pipes that I've what really worried about and panic about, but never an experience. Well, remember we, remember here we had the the neighbours upstairs pipe went under their bath, uh, and it all came through a ceiling up in the storage room and just like very very narrowly um, missed doing loads of my PlayStation 2 games in, you know what I mean? Here's what I've been looking at, by the way. There's a PlayStation 2 on eBay, right? Um, there was a PlayStation 2 on eBay, but it's all been modified and all that, and it's got all the, all the bells and whistles and... Is it a test <sighs> unit, or is it...? A, no, a real... no, it's just, it's just, it's got all the, it's been all recapped and, like, new capacitors and new lasers and new, you know, just all fancied up for the future. Mm -hmm. And it's a. Uh, I'm I'm tempted to get back to get back to my PS2 era a wee bit. I've, Have I, you I got a like PS2? I've got I've, I've got a couple of them. I've got a Japanese I've got a Japanese fat one. I've got a PAL fat one, and I've got a, an American US NTSC slim one. So two fatties and a slim. Jesus. Two fatties and a slim sounds like uh, an album we would have bought for Tower Records. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some West Coast gangster rap album called Two Fives and a Slim. <laughs> we were both. Um but I, I feel like I feel like the PS2 era and maybe even the PS3 era a wee bit I've kinda um lost a wee bit of contact with, if you know what I mean. I've got virtually no fondness. No fondness, but no kind of like attachment to the PS3. The PS3? Mm. <clears throat> no, I know, I know what, I know what you're saying. I can't think of any meaning, meaningful time that I spent with it. And I definitely played a ton of stuff on it, but... Like, I don't... I mean... I, I have far more fondness even for the PS4, like, menu system and stuff than the day of the PS3 one. <laughs> Probably the PS3 I associate, like, things menu like Metal Solid 4 and stuff like that with, with PS3 and... Um... Aye. I know what you mean, though. I kind of know what you mean. 
up there. Um, I mean, there was some good Ridge Racer action on PS3 and. My lighting's terrible. I know you've, you're got saying... all, you've got all my light. I know this is great. I feel like as well. <clears throat> everybody's should golf. We, should we have said hello? Um, we've just started talking to each other. Oh, sorry. Hello. Uh, hello. Welcome to uh, just a wee uh, an, an intermediate episode of Consylvania. Intermediate is not the right word. As we slide off this timeline reality, I thought I'd have one more look at the games that are coming out. The Thormitage is the first one that I've had a look at. It's set in Warsaw in Poland about a hundred years ago. It's a mid-tier experience, I would say. I'll liken it to like a vampire or a uh, The Darkness or a uh, The Darkness 2. It's a narrative RPG with a turn-based combat system and I don't know that you'll be on the combat system that much. You'll be spending many your time dealing with like political intrigue in fucking Poland like a hundred years ago as war limbs. It's such a bizarre setup for a game. But what draws me in, what draws my eye and my interest is just how fucking dry it is. I can't imagine that this game is selling because it just, because it doesn't, it just doesn't sell itself. It's like a dusty old book and I'm dusty and old as well so it suits me quite well. I like mid-tier experience as well, you don't get too excited. I, I really love playing Baldur's Gate, but I got off excited at times, my heart can't take that. A much lower budget suits me, so this is perfect for me. It's a lovely, pretty game. Voice acting's rubbish. I shouldn't have brought it up, you're not gonna play it. Why are you just standing there, Joseph? Aren't you going to help her? Joseph, gonna help her, please, Joseph. Only just looking at Unicorn Overlord and I'm really very, very taken with it. It's delightful in so many different ways. It's beautiful in every screen that you go to. It's the very definition of polished. But it's not the tight tactical battles or the, even the beautiful art style that appeals to me the most about Unicorn Overlord. It's the fact that it's basically a game about making pals. You have to make loads of new pals if you're going to be successful in this game. It feels like the perfect game to be playing as we slide off of this plane of reality into the past. Because sure, you'll remember that in the past, that's where all your best friends really are. That's where your best experiences really are in the past. All your best memories, even at the time when you were having these experiences you were looking forward to, you didn't realise at the time that they, they were the best memories that you were ever going to make in the past I'm talking about. These times that we live in now are not times for friendship anymore. That's outdated and ridiculous and soft. No, it's the past where true friendship was born and thrives. So I'd check out Unicorn Overlord if I were you. I saw that Dragon's Dogma 2 came out and people were moaning about it. It's not getting very good scores and stuff, so I thought I'd have a look at it. Just a demo, like just the start of the game, just to see how it how it kicks off. As a chosen hero bestowed with immense power, a nefarious wielder of great magic, a conqueror. I really like the character design personally, I don't see what the problem is there. Now is the time to take your place among the worthy. Forge bonds. Gather allies. Fulfill your destiny. I think the reason why people don't like Dragon's Dogma 2 is because they're spoiled. There's nothing wrong with this. This is all, all the limbs are moving the way limbs should be moving. Yeah, I don't really have a problem with that. I'll just have a quick shot. I'll just have a quick shot. Right, just a quick shot. Once it's loaded. Comments! It's not as story driven as I was expecting it to be. I do like that it's fucking loud though, like you're in an arcade. Nah, there's nothing wrong with this. Dragon's Dogma is actually pretty good. We've not been well. How, how long were you at the game? Three weeks you were at the game? Um, over three Ish. weeks. Over three weeks now. Um, but I'm kind of, I feel like I'm... I've, I've got up this morning to do this and do Consylvania stuff and now I feel 
like I'm going to either vomit or shit myself or faint. So. Well, that was how that was how I felt a few weeks ago, and then shivers and then terrible the worst sore throat <laughs> I've ever had. Oh. Then as my sore throat was getting better, then I cough, which Ooh. would make my sore throat worse again. And now I can't shift. <laughs> I've got a cough I can't shift now, so it's been great. A lot of coughs, a bit. Look at how white this beard is. So I, so I've been, but I feel like I want to get back in touch with my PS2 days. I've been getting a lot of as we, as we build up towards uh, our new show starting. I've been getting a lot of old magazines delivered <coughs> through the post. They've been arriving. Old computer and video games magazines, old Your Sinclair magazines. Is that, is that a pricey um, endeavour, getting old magazines? How are they? Well, I'm not bothered about condition, so that right, right. helps. So, you know, even I'm picking up like just old tatty ones and stuff like that as well, but it's just, what it's quite... Like um, magazines about potatoes? Aye. I've found it quite emotional looking at these old magazines. I've not looked at many of them because um, because that's something we'll be doing together. So Did I've you have any, have any anyway? Sp- Did you have any old games magazines? No, anyway? no that old. No yeah. that old. I do have some old magazines, like I've got old uh, Dreamcast magazines and remember Arcade and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't have anything that far back. But quite emotional, by the way. Reading these magazines, looking at them. I saw open one because I thought we'll probably not use this one, and I had a wee read it, and it was just even like something like just a, there was an interview with Daily Thompson, <laughs> in it, and that was kind of emotional. And then there was there was pictures. There was a Barry McGuigan poster in one of them. Right. Still intact. And, uh, well. I mean, it was like just a one-page post. I mean, I'm not putting it on my wall. If that's what you're get asking. it up, get it up. You're loving them. The Barry McGuigan poster in a video game magazine, computer game magazine. Um, there was a page that was kind of like it was as if like Nora Batty had written it. Nora Batty for last of the summer wine. What do you mean? It was like the joke kind of was that she was reviewing the games almost, or that she was. Oh. But it was just the references to all this kind of stuff was emotional, do you know what I mean? Because it really, it really kind of took me back to the days, you know what I mean? Um, There's one that's got the Thompson Twins on the cover, the band, the Thompson Twins on the cover of it, Mm -hmm. um, in a sports car. Um, There's jokes about who shot JR and all that getting made, do you know what I mean? It's really quite emotional, and it it made me think like... Quite homely, it sounds... Yeah, I mean, it really made me um, very nostalgic, you know, for a time that's really long ago. <laughs> no, I mean, do I go get too much away talking about the retro? I'm looking forward to that though. I'd, 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 I'd never realised there might actually be potential for stealing ideas because that Nora Batty thing. I'm struggling this month to come up with something to talk about. Try and Nora Batty. Well, um... there is about three people. Asking to have Demi Moore back quite often, but it's a pain in the ass to type it all out and all that. I do I mean, type it all out for her to read. I feel like... Nearly gave, um, it, nearly gave the game away, though. I feel like we need to take it easy here. Because this retro show is going to be more work than this show's been <laughs> for a while. So I think I feel like we shouldn't overextend ourselves at the minute. Um... There's going to be a kind of studio based. I don't want to. I can't know day it though. I can't know day it. The people need to know that. I can't know stress about it. And that's just my process. I, uh... I, need to, I need to nearly fall out with my girlfriend at the end of every month because I need to stress about it so much and stare at it. And then the thing at the end isn't even that fucking good anyway. Sorry. Don't say that. I need my illness. Don't say that. My illnesses. There's going to be a studio based element to the new show. So we're trying to close down some deals on that. No, actually, that yes, that's been... not a joke. That's not a joke. No, that's not no, a joke. That... Um, I've been trying to get that studio-based element for free, though. It's been, it's been how I've been moving. You should be able to get um, it for free. 
you'll be, uh, you'll be you'll be promoting the thing as you're doing it. Somebody will try this angle already. <laughs> well, this is the angle. This is totally the angle I'm trying. Where it's like the like. How many viewers do you get? No, I'm like, I mean, I don't know, I've not counted them, but <laughs> a lot, a lot. But uh, yeah, so there'll be a studio element, so we're getting so uh, real they need to... what you to put it this way. You couldn't, well, I was going to say, you them, couldn't they fit them in this room. I was going to say to you, Ryan, um, we'll need to like grab a coffee during the week or something, um, but you might be yeah. on your ass. I don't know, who knows? I'm drinking lots of water. I can't even know what you're doing anyway, because we've got stuff to do. So listen, you've got a uh, Divinity 2. You downloaded it right after finishing Baldur's Gate. So you finished Baldur's Gate 3? I did indeed. Did it stick, two day, did it stick two the days landing? Ago. Did it stick the landing? I would say... Well... Th I would say no. Really. Ooh. But... But it didn't matter. You enjoyed it so much. It, it, it didn't matter. It, it, no, it totally doesn't matter because we were like the our end play time was two hundred and twelve hours. We were like, we were deep, deep into the game and the world and stuff. So the amount that we got out of it, <clears throat> uh, the ending didn't matter too much. It was just because well, you must have been you must have been really high leveled by the end of it, though, right? Well, the levels capped at twelve, and Baldur's Gate. Ah. So we're well, level twelve, basically. A few people moaned about me talking about the spoilery stuff at the end of it, but I don't think it matters too much at this point. Like, I've, well, I've not played this, so don't say it to me. There was just there was a fight that we had that was a big turning point in our playthrough, but I don't even know if it's a fight that you necessarily have to have. You, there are yeah. ways run that are are run maced things, so I don't know if it's a fight that you have to have, but it was a big turning point for us. Um, but I talked about it in the episode anyway. It was the fight with Raphael, the devil. He's a devil. So the the level at this point, I we were a level eleven, uh, one half being maximum level. But Raphael, who's a devil, was level sixteen. But he was also surrounded by all his high level minions, and he had these fucking pillars that were giving him incredible buffs. So it was it was an epic 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 fight that lasted about two hours. Um, and after that, we never got much of a challenge in fights. We were only playing it on the default difficulty, but we kind of walked through most things after that. Like the the, the were remaining you disappointed? the remaining plot characters that we we picked off throughout the game, and the end battle wasn't really that difficult, just because we'd amassed we'd been in so many fights that we'd amassed so much stuff as well. Like I was using. I, I, quite, I quite like it when games give you. A hard fight, like maybe not at the end, but close to the end, and then give you a wee bit of a lap of honour after it. Just let you Aye. know what I mean. No, it felt it felt good. To... If anything, I thought we could have got a wee bit more. There was like a few characters that mentioned what we'd done, like our accomplishment. But it would have been good if we were kind of like known for what had happened because it was a pretty big deal. I think. Had you had you finished every quest that was available? No, no. We also fucked up um, by moving to uh, and we moved to an area with the next area, like the second area of the game, without wrapping up quests early on as well. Like it gives right. you a warning, but you're not really. It's no. It's no detailed enough. The warning, like how significant moving on is going to be. So we fucked right. that up as well. We fucked a lot of things up. It, like it, this, we had our head in our hands watching a lot of the end cutscenes because there's obviously uh, like wide shots that, that that are there to show you like characters in different positions. But there's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We've, we've got like two people stone in there. There's like a after the big fight. There's a this character Withers who you don't know much about, but seems to be very significant in the universe brings everybody back together for a for a party like after the big fight and we, we had like fucking three characters there because right, everybody right. had either died or fell out with us so our playthrough was a bit calamitous but still an amazing game w were you disappointed when they said that they won the that they were done with the franchise 
Aye, well, well, when they say, when Larian said, like, we're not doing any DLC or anything like that, like, we're moving on to something new, or, was that disappointing to you? Or... I don't, because well, I don't for know. me, when I read that, I was just like, oh, good, get, get back to Divinity now, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't really, what kind of, like, what people say to creators a lot of the time, what we've had said to us as well, are just do what you want to do. Like, do what, as long as you're enjoying it, then we'll enjoy watching it, sort of thing. But that, I feel that way about it. Whatever they make, I'm um, now I'm interested. But the end in the Baldur's Gate 3 has them saying, like, these characters can go off and do their own thing for now, sort of thing. So it does tease that there might, might have been DLC or... Well, I mean, I suppose, but they, they, they I mean... It's no their characters, so it's like I suppose somebody else will pick up Baldur's Gate Four and do it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's a big, big boots to fill for whoever takes that I one next. I was all, oh, I, I, that's I'm a hell of a wee... Listen, know, is that, there's going to be an argument here for because when you consider how good Baldur's Gate One and Two both were, you know, it's a hell of a um, franchise. So it's a lot of pressure for whoever steps in to handle mm. four. But they've based well, they, they practically like I'm happy that Larry and they're doing whatever it is that they're doing next, but I was also after um finishing the game in the mode I got in or of just wanting mare. I was like, how difficult is it for them to just like gaze mare? Can't like know that the know that the everything's set in place and they know how the game works, can they just like make mere adventures? Can they bolt stuff on all the time? So <clears throat> I kinda want it both ways, but that's the reason for picking up Divinity. Too, because Aye. I want more. I want more for them. It'll be interesting to see how it feels going for you going back the way to like an older game. We're like an hour and hour and a half. In an hour and a half, we managed to pick our characters, and uh, Michael managed to get us killed by getting in a fight. I think in a tutorial area with people that he should never got a fight in, and so he managed to get us killed. Um, right. But already, I know it's it seems to be that a big difference with the boulders gate. Through. Well, I mean, there isn't there's a surprisingly um, little difference graphically like, between the two, and there's seven years between the two games. But you're no getting what the animated cutscenes every time you speak to somebody that's missing. You're just getting that. But I really, I already, oh, aye, but I already really, really like the narrate the narrator's voice, but also the fact that the audio quality is kind of cheap. It it really reminds me of like cheaper like a kind of audio books or audio plays or something like that. So I really like that sound. Aye. But I think it's a, it's a really good world. It's a good world as well. You know what I mean? It's like obviously the Baldur's Gate world is. You know, it's there's pro there's probably limitations as well with with the kind of stories you can tell in that world. I'm sure like Wizards of the Coast keep a good eye on what kind of stories you're telling. Whereas obviously with Divinity, they can they can kind of go in any direction they like. So there's a lot of kind of. Um, I can say, ah, it's a brilliant game. You know what I mean? Mm. You finished it. Aye. I am really looking forward to Long time ago though, long time ago. One thing you appreciate more and more as you get older is that time really does fall wank into the floor. Here is the footage, in fact, of the incident described earlier of my cousin getting us into a fight, I think in a tutorial area. I don't even think you're supposed to be able to get into a fight in this area, but he's managed it straight away and we're way out of our depth and we're gonna die. But seven years between Divinity Original Sin 2 and Baldur's Gate 3, 20 years between now and when we started making this games programme. Time just falls wanking to the floor. What can you do? Likely because we've been answering some interview questions recently regarding the 20th anniversary of Consylvania, it's given us pause and time to look over the varied events of the last 20 years and spend some time just considering the incredible amount of change that you go through in a time period like that and how almost unusual almost unique it seems that there can be constants in amongst all of that change like friends like robert like michael Fucking idiot getting me fucking killed again for fuck. And as we slide out of this hellscape, 
cursed reality timeline back to the past, you can't help but reflect on the, the pillars that still stand in your story that you can go and visit. I'm talking about friends, but I'm comparing it to pillars. It's not a very good, I didn't think this through this, but as much as I unbelievably overwhelmingly enjoyed my Baldur's Gate 3 playthrough with my cousin, we really made a right fucking mess of a lot of the subplots and storylines and we lost a load of characters and it all sound fucking ridiculous but it made me think about my own life and how many severed connections there's been and how many thoughts and I think so much more about mental health now because all the things that I've been through and I work in care now so I work with people who need help the changes we go through in this journey Astarian was necrotic by the end of my playthrough. Sorry, I was talking about life as well. I think Consylvania is starting to disintegrate. So many brilliant opportunities playing through this game with somebody that you've known your entire life for making references that literally only the two you would get for 30, 30 odd year ago. And something came up in conversation while we were playing that we Bay 3 watch that I want to share with you. It's one of the best documentaries you'll ever see. One of the simplest, most charming documentaries that you'll see. High on the North Yorkshire Moors, there's a village where a remarkable project has been underway for half a century. <laughs> it's called the strangest village in Britain. Botton is home to 300 people. Nearly half of them have learning difficulties, including Down syndrome, autism, and mental illness. Botton's a tolerant place where people are accepted, however eccentric their behaviour. I've been very accepting of my cousin's behaviour, playing with Baldur's Gate 3, getting us killed all the time. I think, I feel. What you find when you watch this beautiful documentary is that, given the opportunity to live like normal people, these people with special needs live like normal people. They have thoughts, they have anxieties, they feel sad, they feel happy, and they have the same need and desire to have connection. The connections are the only thing that matter, back to Rab and Ryan. I was sitting the other day, right, and I was, I was playing Tribes 3 Rivals, which has just went in early access. On. No, I don't really play anything on PC, really, you know what I mean? Um, I've got Baldur's Gate 3 downloaded, but, but, but even that, I just it takes a lot for me to sit and play a game at my PC. But Are you a laptop Tribe or a desktop? On my laptop. You know, I do have my desktop, but I just, I need, I need to fart about with it. Um, but I just, I just don't, I just don't like sitting playing a game like this. You know what I mean? Invite but me because in. of tribes. Next time you've got Baldur's Gate, see if I'm on and invite me in. Invite <laughs> yeah. you. Because I can um, just join through. people's games. Go through it again. Um, but tribes three. The minute that went in early access, I was like, I need to go on because I, I've, I love tribes. I've always loved tribes. I've, I've played all of them. Um, even played the PlayStation Two tribes, and. Uh, and it, it's great, you know what I mean? I'm having, you know, I'll be talking about it, but um, I was just thinking when I was playing it, though, I was sitting playing that, and then the one day I'd, I'm coming towards the end of Final Fantasy 16, so I'm kind of coming towards the end of that, and then I came off, and then I played a bit of Tribe 3, and then I came off, and then I played a wee bit of Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, and then, um, and then I, I played a wee bit further into another dungeon and Sharon the Wanderer, and, and I was thinking to myself, this is like, it's crazy that there's all this stuff that I like, because this is all very specifically stuff I'm into, like Final Fantasy, right? I'm mm -hmm. playing two Final Fantasy games concurrently that are both like cracking big spectacles and playing two at once, right? Mm -hmm. um, and playing a new Tribes game, which I fucking love, and playing a Sharing the Wanderer, Wanderer game, which is one of the things I love as well, and them all at once. I don't think I've ever had, you know, when, you, when you're playing a few things at once, I don't think I've ever had a set like that before, ever. Mm -hmm. Like at any point in my life, I've ever had, you know, a few games, a number of games on the go at once that are all, not just not just all just great games, but also just games that are right up my alley, like my kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? I'm it's like a very... I'm, I'm picturing the Netherstone for anybody that knows Baldur's Gate 3. The Netherstone's in three pieces, so. You'll get to it. But it's... It's quite magical, man. It's quite a lucky... Quite a lucky thing. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I was trying to think an example that. Have you I never even, like, even... ha- like hammered a game? Like done it that way, done it the way I did, and just got obsessed with one thing. Well, well, weirdly, Divinity was one of the ones where it was like I was just all in on Divinity right through to the mm-hmm. end, and then I'm trying to think. Well, yeah, th- th- sometimes that does happen, um, and sometimes depends, it's depend, way... depends how rich the thing is that you're playing, doesn't it? Sometimes, and sometimes it's just a game can get its hooks into you. Like even that game Silent Hope that I played recently, which is no like you know, it's like a you know, it's not a very well known game or anything, but it, it kind of got its teeth right into me, and I just. When I was playing a game, I was like, I'm sticking that one. You know what I mean? Um, and so, so there are still certain ones, but I kind of feel like sometimes when, certainly with something like Tribes, I'll jump on and have a couple of games every day. Like since this came out, I've jumped on and had a couple of, a few matches a day, you know, and it's a long time since mm-hmm. I've done that. You have a match in Tribes in about 15 minutes or something, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, um, but it's, uh, it's really great. But it's a good. We're very listen. We're very lucky. I keeps. I feel like I say it every year we're in a golden age, but we're in a golden age. I know. It's weird because there's so many great things, but there seems to be an awful lot of pessimism as well in the industry about how gaming's never been worse and how doom, doom, doomed with all the layoffs and everything. But yeah, there's a lot of incredible, incredible games getting created. I think if you, I think if you're into RPGs, you're living through a great time at the minute. You know mm. what I mean? I think if you're into RPGs, because I haven't even, I've no, I've got Unicorn Overlord, but I've not started it yet. That's sitting there waiting for me to start. I'm, I'm just looking at it now. Um, and there's just, there's just so much good stuff. You know what I mean? Like I've, I've got that Sea of Stars waiting for me to play as well. And, um, aye, man, it's just, it's like, it's the best. It's the best time. Maybe that's what people think that it's buffering. It's hot still for like 10 seconds, so people think it's buffering. Many, many years ago, as these loot crates open up, these blurry loot crates, uh, blurry because it's an early access game and weird things happen. Like it's all out of focus, it looks like it's out of focus, but it's just, I don't know, something wrong with the game. It's early access. But a long time ago, I remember I was in the Barras in Glasgow, the Barras market, and I came across a stall. There was a woman, I can see her right now in my mind's eye, there was a woman working behind the stall, and she had black curly hair, and she was selling a lot of shoes and boots, and for some reason, it was shoes and boots and kind of necklaces that a middle-aged woman would sell at a stall, but there was also a copy of a PC game called Star Siege. And I remember thinking to myself, why is this woman selling a game called Star Siege? Anyway, I bought it because she had no idea what it was and it was cheap. And I took it home and Star Siege was uh, fun enough. I quite enjoyed it, but there was also another game with Star Siege and that game was called Tribes. Now this is how far back we go to me playing Tribes games. I played Tribes that came with Star Siege, then I played Tribes 2, and then, you know, Tribes Ascend, and then all the other ones. There's been a number of Tribes games. I even imported a PlayStation 2 Tribes game. Uh, And I love the Tribes games, and the reason why I love them is because of the sense of freedom when you're playing these games. As you can see here from the footage, uh, it's a game where you move really fast, you ski, it's all about skiing. The first point of contact for people with this game, I think, is often a bit of an issue because movement seems so odd in this game. But believe me, once you're used to Tribes games, once you're a kind of a, a fully trained skier, there's nothing that really feels like uh, the way you move around these maps in these Tribes games. This is, this is Tribes 3 Rivals, and it's in early access right now. For anybody out there who doesn't know what early access means, it means when people sell a game on Steam before it's ready to sell yet, but they've just decided to start selling it early just to get a bit of money in to keep the lights on. That's kind of what I assume early access means. It also means that players can uh, say what they like and what they don't like, and the idea is that the 
the developers will fix it and all that. And there's a lot of that been going on already with Tribes 3 Rivals because despite the fact it is Tribes back as we love it, there are a lot of things we're moaning about on the Tribes Discord. What Tribes 3 Rivals does not have that the earlier Tribes games had is, you know, things like vehicles, uh, you know, there's a lot of kind of base building stuff that there was in other games that isn't here in this one. This is a very stripped down version of Tribes. I'll explain to you quickly the point of Tribes. Tribes is a capture the flag game, essentially. Uh, there are other modes, there are other modes even getting added to this version of the game. But fundamentally, when you're playing Tribes, you're playing Capture the Flag. That's what you want to be playing. Two teams moving from one end of the map to the other, skiing super fast, catching the flag and getting back. But, but Tribes is all about roles, it's all about jobs. And, you know, you're going to have your guys whose job it is to move incredibly fast around the map, skiing like fuck up and down hills to build up their speed so that they can zip right past where the flag is. They can just go bang, pick up a flag and get away with it 200 mile an hour and get back to base, right? So that's what their job is. Then you've got defenders whose job it is to kind of lay back at the base with big heavily armoured suits on. They're less mobile. Uh, but they can they can take out, they can try and defend that flag and try and take out these really fast moving pathfinders that are going to come and try and steal the flag, right? And then you get guys like me who play the midfield. I like to be in the midfield, just kind of disrupting the other team's plans. Occasionally, I might make a run on a flag if it looks like pathfinders are only making their way through. I might make a wee run on a flag, but most of the time, what I'll do is I'll just hang about the midfield and try and disrupt, try and spot somebody's try and disrupt and make sure that the lines are not coming off properly. Now, I'm what I would like to call a veteran tribes player. As is always standard, I try to capture some nice footage of me doing some skillful stuff, but you know, whenever you're capturing footage, it's one of the kind of laws of making video game shows is when you're capturing footage, you never do anything very impressive or have a very good game. Uh, but I'm, I'm a tribes veteran. I consider myself quite a good tribes player. Uh, and it was been interesting playing Tribes 3 Rivals because I think that everybody that's playing it just now is a Tribes veteran. So I'm usually kind of ending up mid-table, uh, maybe kind of upper mid-table in the leaderboard, you know, on the scoreboard at the end of matches. So kind of doing all right, playing my role, hanging in there. Um, you know, and it's no, this is the thing about Tribes as well, it's about being a team player. It's not about scoring the big points, getting the most kills or anything like that. It's just being a team player. I like to get a lot of assists. That's what I'm talking about when I'm playing that kind of disruption role in the middle. Guys might zip past me on their way to the flag, but I'll weaken them a wee bit, you know what I mean? I'll take some of their armour off them so that, the, so that the defenders up the back can finish them off. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with getting lots of assists. What I want to say, though, is that um, this version of Tribes maybe doesn't have everything that you would want but it also doesn't have maybe the budget of some of the earlier Tribes games as well. Uh, I feel like this is a very noble attempt to continue the Tribes experience, uh, you know, for fans of the game. And the most important thing, whenever you load up a Tribes game or something that, you know, because there have been a couple of other games that have tried to be like Tribes, uh, it's very difficult to get right the, the sensation of free flowing motion uh, that the tribes games are known for the movement and the flow of a tribes game is a very very magical thing and i'm delighted to be able to say that tribes three rivals gets that absolutely right it's been such a pleasure playing this while i've been no well this past few weeks you know, this is the game that Daddy plays in the corner of the living room. You know, the Wayne's watch a telly, chatter away, and I'm sitting there playing Tribes because it just feels so damn good. I can't wait to see how it ends up as time goes by, what gets added to it. And I'm inviting you all to play it. Come and play Tribes with Ab. I love Tribes so much. So we're making the new retro show next month then, aren't we? That's what's coming next. Yes. Last, this is the last time that you'll see any of this kind of thing. Yeah. And we'll be it. doing that live event, but you've got mad unwell and we couldn't get the venue, so we've had to postpone no, that for later in the year. 
we'll need to push that a wee bit, but also, also we're getting a wee bit of press, aren't we? Yeah. And we're getting a wee bit of press later in the year, so we might be better just waiting to, for a selling tickets point of view, wait until the wee bit of press happens. Um, for a proper big, nice big relaunch of things. Um, but aye, it's not, well, so this is it. Is this going to be the last time we talk about modern games to everybody? Dogs Martin. It is. This is the last time we're sliding off of this existence, this sphere, yeah. which I'm kind of up for. The American election, the truth versus Alec Jones, I, I watched the other day, that put me in the mood to no be in this time anymore as well. Listening yeah. to all the, all the descriptions of the school shootings and then seeing that fucking lunatic doing what he does. Um... Aye. Well, I've, let's go. I've let's, been, let's leave. I've been watching Gladiators and really enjoying the it. The new one. Yeah. A lot of Safis. We went to a big meet up with Safis pals, and a lot of her middle aged pals or women seem to like Gladiators. But I think they're watching it for a different reason than you might be watching it. Yeah, I mean, well, is listen. That was always that was always one of the reasons to watch Gladiators. But it's uh, it's really good, you know what I mean? But it's like just exactly, it's exactly, they've no, there's no effort to modernise it or anything, it's just exactly gladiators, you know what I mean? And I, I just kind of think that's what people are wanting now, people are wanting that, um, that nice nostalgia, that nice cosy nostalgia, and that's where we're going now, right? That's Here where we're off, you know? Here it comes. If we can, sur- if we can survive these illnesses, we're that's where we're time. going, mate. We're running we're out going time to the past. Let's go. Call's going to end. This I'm is ready. it. So this is the end of the mod. This is the end of the modern incarnation. I'll see you in the past, Ryan. Okay. Take this phone. I'll see you in the past. Away from me. I'll see you in the past. We switch sides for some reason. Hand on this. See you in the past, Ryan. <laughs>